My phone rang and it was Louis, and he says, listen. From that decision when Louis called you and stuff, any regrets? Certain players have actually even come and watched live events. It's more modern. Modern, exactly. This morning we are so fortunate, and, and if timing and luck, if you believe in that, well, we certainly do this morning. We are so fortunate to have Dean with us, Burmester, this morning, and as a current Johannesburg Open Championship. Yeah, there's, a, there's a beautiful trophy right there. There's yeah. the tro trophy. Dina said we can keep it for you. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's the baby one. As long as you keep it safe. <laughs> I'm not going to be oh, flying it back one? to her. That's the baby one. That's uh, my, uh, they're very fortunate enough to give me a replica. So uh, that'll go in my pub back home in George for sure. Oh, Sam, well, Dean, congratulations on, on, on the last four days and yesterday's win. What an amazing achievement and just how you played. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, geez, it, was a, it was a really fun week and... Um, I have to commend everyone. You know, it was it was a really special special week, and uh, Houghton was in in great nick, and obviously it suited my eye. And you know, I went there with a goal in mind, and that was first and foremost to try and get in the open, and then um, I managed to do that and more. So I'm very grateful. Sure. And tell me, what was your, your so your mindset? But I mean, if you go through the couple of days, just take us maybe through the last four days. Yeah, I mean, look at the, the first day. To be honest with you, I was a little rusty and. Um, I, I could certainly feel that. Uh, it didn't feel like my game was as sharp as it needed to be. Um, but then I, I did know that, you know, a lot of the work that I had put in will, will pay off. And um, I was patient enough on the second day to let that happen. You know, the back nine that second day yeah. kind of really got me into contention. You know, I hit 10 putts in nine holes and it kind of came out of nowhere. I hadn't putted like that in a, in a while. Um, so to do that gave me a lot of confidence and... Um, Saturday, to be honest, I probably played the worst of the four days, um, but I just hung around. And then when I saw nobody really made any moves on Saturday, I was right in with a shot, only three back. <clears throat> so, um, you know, when, when it came to Sunday, I, I really woke up. I actually had a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of butterflies when I woke up in the morning, which is a good thing. Um, that means, you know, you care, and I talk about that all the time. You've got to have that, otherwise, you know, what are you, what are you playing it for? You know, playing the game for and, and the competition, you kind of need that. So when I woke up with that, I, I had a really, really good feeling, and I just went through my process. Um, and by the time I got on that first tee, I was ready. I was ready and raring to go. So um, when Tristan obviously had a little bit of a bad, bad start and brought everyone back, you know, I was only one back after two holes. All of a sudden, that was kind of the dream start for me. And that was exactly where I wanted to be, so... I knew if I just uh, stuck to what I was doing and not worried about what anybody else is doing, um, you know, I'll get the job done. And um, I managed to do that. Yeah, I tell you, that 15th was an incredible hole. <laughs> just, yeah, I just tell you. Some big drives on 15. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, like 15. The I mean, one I said, had to come through there. Bro. I, was, uh, I was actually telling Jason, I said, you know what won us this tournament? And he said, what do you mean? I said, we hit the second fairway every day. Yeah. And we hit the 15th Those fairway the every day. Holes. Yeah. So that, you know, that took me out of bogeys on both of those holes where guys were making doubles and bogeys all over the place because they're two fantastic golf holes, you know. Both of them are are really, really tight. and But if you get a drive away, both of them are a wedge in. So um, that made a big difference for me. And obviously the birdie on 15 yesterday was, was kind of the, the little cushion I needed mm. for sure. Well, just before we carry on, um, four European wins now officially from yesterday. Yeah, uh, nine shine shine two of wins, um, and then obviously in, a live golf player um, joined about a year and a half ago. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Joined um, so joined February of this year. Um, our captain Louis Westhausen gave me a call um, while I was actually busy with PGA Tour tournaments, and um, yeah, it was a, a little bit of a toss toss and turn kind of decision. But at the end of the day, I'm very happy with the decision I made, and. Um, yeah, I get to play golf with three guys I admire and, and look up to in Louis, Brandon and Shaw. And um, to be an all South African team um, and kind of represent South African and team aspect is, is really special. And, um, you know, we achieved some great things this year together and, and certainly had a lot of fun. And on top of that, I get to uh, spend a lot more time with my family and my kids. So it was it was a really cool decision. And, and um, I'm very happy. Obviously, you know, the dream of the PJ Tour when you're a kid growing up was something I had to weigh up. But... At the end of the day, I mean, my kids and my family come first, for sure. Sam, you know, I mean, Arthur and I were speaking, and it's, we knew that part of that decision you made. But we'll get on to live now, but if you don't mind, just give us a bit of insight into that call from Louis. How does that work? And um, So uh, we were, I was playing in the Amex, um, and it was the Tuesday before. 
my phone rang and it was Louis and he says, listen, I'm kind of a little bit in, an, I'm in a bit of a jam. Um, but, um, Brandon and Charlotte both said, I need to give you a call and at least give you the option. Um, we feel like you deserve it. You've played some great golf and it's a career, you know, it's a life changing decision. Yes, yeah. Um, so he said, you know, you don't have a lot of time, but we're here if you need, if you need to ask any questions and you need to know anything, we're here to answer everything we possibly can. And, um, please don't hesitate, but make the decision for you. Don't make it for anybody else. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it went. It was a really kind call and it, it was, you know, it was up in the air. There was, he was like, I, I don't know how you feel about it or whatever, but I just want to give you the option. It's there if you'd like it. And, um, that was very, very kind of him to not kind of push me in a direction one way or the other. And I, uh, I asked a few people, a few people I admire's advice, um, including the three of them. And, um, at the end of the day, yeah, I, I went with a decision I thought was correct for me. How long did it take you to make that decision? It took me about three or four days. Um, and a lot of uh, lost sleep, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I, you know, I had a good start on the PJ Tour as well. You know, I played, yeah, yeah, you did. I played at that stage. I think I played seven events, missed one cut, had a couple of top twenties and a top five, and so I'd, you know, I was top fifty on the money list. I was having a good season. Yeah. So um, that was your official ranking, yeah. Yeah. So and you know, I was close to top fifty in the world. Kind of thinking about, am I going to get into Augusta or not get into Augusta, and then. Um, you know, there were, there were really big events, no cut events on the PJ Tour. And, um, I asked for invites into all of those events and didn't get invites, which is understandable. I mean, I was a rookie and, and all those things, but that, that kind of made me f feel like, you know, what more do I need to do to get, to get into Augusta? It's a dream of mine to play there and it's really tough to get into. And, and when I had to weigh that up and, you know, financial security for my family and time with my kids, it was a no brainer. So that's what it really came down to is I've been trying to get into Augusta and I've been top hundred player in the world probably for the last three or four years. Yeah. And, um, I still hadn't got there. I was like, well, I'm not getting any younger. So <laughs> I think, I think the right decision is to, to spend more, more time with my family. Sure. I mean, you know, on that note, when you speak about top 100 and, you know, you got close, so close to top 50, um, on the official ranking, you are such a low key person in golf but you know when when we spoke the achievement that you guys have done you know if you just look at the stingers team and the people that's in there there wasn't big successful you know if you go to the old guard ernie else you know back in the day was david retief you guys are that next generation which is just incredible and how many people look up to that and how many people now get excited about golf and how south african pro players can now achieve and look at something that's just amazingly achievable because success in golf is obviously on the winning side. But I mean, it's just incredible when I listen to interviews between the four of you that, you know, Louis even says in one thing, he says to Brandon, you know, who's the most good looking guy. And Louis says, well, you better say it's me. Your contract is up for renewal. Yeah. <laughs> that chirping and that back end. I mean, I just thought to myself, what a dream for yeah. four people to love each other like that, support each other like that, and then play golf together for both individually and in a team format. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's a super special environment um, to be involved in. And I think as South Africans, we all went to school, and we all played team sports and we all grew up with that. You know, you all grew up playing cricket or yeah. rugby or hockey or whatever it is. Even if you were playing tennis or squash, there was always a team element to everything, you know, even golf, which I'm sure we'll get to later in school yeah. stuff. Um, there, there was always that little team environment. And then, um, when you turn professional, you, you lose that totally. You know, you have a little bit of camaraderie between your friends and people you've known, but that team aspect is gone. Your, your team aspect is between you and your few people, your agent, trainer, coach whoever you have you know but the team aspect dies and then um for me you know growing up as a kid wanting to be a professional cricketer um before obviously realizing i was much better at golf, golf. um it was a dream come true you know the first couple of weeks were kind of i was trying to find my feet with the other three guys but then once we got that and to see how supportive they were you know through good and bad was amazing you know, when you get, when you walk off a green and a guy's, you know, everyone, you walk into the players lounge and guys are giving you high fives, well played, or, you know, a simple thing. If you've played poorly and you get the big hat, we have this big hat yeah, that yeah, we yeah. hand around, you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, that, that little joke makes you not want to play badly, you know, so 
You know, Brandon, I mean, he hates that bloody hat. He doesn't want to have that hat at all. He he flippin' hates it with a sore heart. So he he makes sure that his score counts pretty much every day. So that you know, that kind of those kind of little motivations and little things and little pranks we play. I think first or second week out, we just got new hats. And I walked into the locker room and I w- opened my locker and I had no hats. And I was like, where are all my hats? And I opened all the guy, other guys' lockers and they've all got hats. And I was like, well, what the, how come I didn't get any hats? I go and go to the agent and I'm like to the manager, where are all my hats? And he's like, no, your hats are in your locker. And I'm like, no, I don't have hats. And I walk around. Walk, eventually, I find my hats behind Brandon's hats. And then I knew. But Charles was standing there with a video camera videoing the whole thing, watching me panic. <laughs> so, you know, little things like that, I mean, they um, they make it sh- a lot of humor. And, and the fact that everyone's got families and wives and kids and they all get along, that's, yeah. it's a super special environment for sure. Now that we're on Live, we might as well go into Live. Would you mm-hmm. be okay with that? And maybe we'll just swap them around a little bit. Who's worn that hat the most? Do you know? Who's like the... Uh, I mean, this season, I'd probably have to say Shaw. We thought Shaw. He's been carrying that I hat. I think so. He says he, he pretty much owns that hat. I mean, he's, he's paid his dues, he thinks. So I think I think he's going to come out firing this next season. So uh, on Live Tour, um, just tell us a little bit about the team dynamics. Now, it's, it's a very strange thing. 54 holes. You know, you've got team play and individual play at the same time with a shotgun start. What is that team dynamics like with other teams and camaraderie ship? We obviously know you guys are incredible at mm. it, but what is that like versus a PGA or European tour? Um, so in Europe, it was when I started in Europe, we, we were fortunate enough to have a lot of older guys there. Um, you know, the likes of Darren Fickart, yes. um, you know, Thomas Aiken, Richard Sterney, even, you know, Henny Otto, Trevor Fisher was playing, U- Ulrich van der Berg got his card back. So when I was in, you know, kind of starting out in Europe, we we all used to go to meals together and we all used to kind of hang out and, you know, away from golf, always played practice rounds together. And um, But then as the years went on, you know, things kind of sp- split up. You know, I think, I don't know if that's more money or more opportunity or guys just, you know, started to move their own ways. The guys went to America, um, other guys had to come back to South Africa, but that dynamic started to get lost. And then, um, you know, it, it kind of became very singular. Then I went to the PJ tour and it was, I mean, you're, you're your a Pat Malone, you're on Isn't your own. It? That's it. You are, it's a seriously, seriously lonely place to play golf. It's probably the most competitive place to play golf. So on the golf course, it's, it's second to none. I mean, if you, you make a bogey, you don't drop, you know, five places or, you know, you drop 20, 30 yeah, yeah, places. Yeah. You know, yeah, you've, yeah, yeah. you've got to have your A game pretty much week in, week out there. You go out there and have a B or C game, you, you miss in the cut. So, um, but then away from golf, I found myself very lonely sitting in a hotel room, having room service on my own because there was no one to go and eat out with. There was no one to go and do anything with. No one would do anything. Everyone was just so golf directed and it was just one way traffic. Um, and then you get to live and you've got some of the best players in the world who've played on the PJ Tour, yeah. done all of that. Yeah. Major champions. Major champions, major champions. all littered with major champions. Mm. And, um, Top 10 players. You know, now you've, I'm going to have breakfast with Cam Smith and we, yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. even talk about golf. We talk about catching fish or DJ or, you know, go with Bryson and we talk about, you know Club why he's speed. using why why he's using a crank driver yeah, you yeah, know yeah. Sp- i spent 30 40 minutes with him on the range and he's explaining everything to me and it's it's fascinating so to have that opportunity of guys to actually open up and give advice and you're able to learn i think is second to none you know and then to be able to watch guys like louis and how they prepare and you know why his putting stroke is so pure yeah. and you watch what he does you know i try and emulate that i try and i try and see what he does and learn from it and and get better and also use their advice, you know, mentally. You know, Brandon Grace has got to have one of the best mentalities in world golf. World it's golf. incredible. Yeah. So to be able to spend time with him and, and really spend time with him, you know, last time I spent time with him, we were juniors, really spent time with him. So it's, um, it's an incredible place to play golf. That dynamic, the team dynamic is interesting. There's certain teams that gel really well. You know, I think the, the teams that have guys all from the same country tend to do better. 
Um, but then a, a team like the Crushers, they have a really good dynamic too. And, you know, they've only got, you know, they've got Chucky Three Sticks, mm. Charles Howell, who's yeah. an incredible human being, Bryson, who's turned out to be a really good leader, actually, incredible, for the whole yeah. for the whole league. He's, yeah. he's, um, he's really turned out to do something special. Then you've got Anaban from India and Paul Casey from England. But they seem to gel really well. And, you know, then you've got the Range Goats, who also gel really well. And they're also massively diverse, you know. They've got four totally different characters in their team. Um, and then, you know, you've got some teams that, that still need to kind of find their way and find their feet. But I think that's the beauty of the, the team aspect, you know, that um, that kind of team dynamic is, is something you, you can't buy. It's something that'll just happen, it'll flow into. So I suppose it also is conducive to create far better friendships and long-time bonds when you have that type of casual interaction and time spent with each other versus on the PJ where it's sort of individually focused? I think definitely. I think um, I feel like you're, you're able <coughs> to, to be remembered as well, I think, you know, with Liv. I think PJ Tour, I mean, if you won two, three times on the PJ Tour and had one bad season and you were off, no one would, no one would remember. Yeah. No one remembers. You know, they forget. Unless you win a major, nobody remembers. Mm. But with Liv... You, like you say, you build those relationships with people and, and you you know, people you admire. You know, I've been fortunate enough this year to play with some amazing golfers. Amazing. You know, Phil, Bubba, guys I used to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, when a guy like Phil comes up to me and we're in the final group on Sunday and I'm playing with him and Cam Smith and he comes up to me on the putting green before we tee off and he's just like, listen, Dean, you've had an incredible year. You should be really proud of what you've done this year. Well played. Before we go tee off. I'll go to the first tee buzzing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if I go if I go in a PGA tour event yeah. and I was probably playing with the same two guys, that yes. wouldn't have happened. Mm. So that dynamic is is super special and I don't think you can you can kind of get it anywhere else in golf. It's I live golf is a really, really cool place to play golf, that's for sure. And from uh, you know, looking back now, just on that a little bit, you know, from that decision when Louis called you and stuff, any regrets? No regrets. Absolutely none. I've uh, I've been able to give my kids, you know, an amazing life so far, and I, and I've also been able to secure things for them for their future. You know, if my both my sons come to me and say, I want to go and study to get into NASA, or yeah. I want to go to Stanford or yeah. Yale, or I want to go to St Andrews or whatever it is, I can say, go for it. Yeah, I don't have to say, all right, we've got to try and go for a bursary or yeah, gotta do this. I yeah, don't have to juggle balls, you know what I mean? To get yeah. a scholarship you know what I mean? You know, yeah. if you're gonna go to Stanford you gotta have serious academics, yeah. you know. Um which I'm lucky my wife is really clever and she's really good at learning. So yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that's the her department with the with kids, her, yeah. you know. So but but yeah, I'm I'm able to provide my kids with that, which is really special. And there's there's and I've looked at there's not a lot of information on what the format the 54 holes and the shotgun starts. So do you mind just taking us through that a little bit and, and the adjustment? Obviously, and the adjustment, it's a big yeah. adjustment yeah, as so well. Look, there were a few adjustments to make. You know, music on every tee box was yes. something that kind of. You used to have earphones back in the day, though. Yeah, I used to wear earphones warming up, yeah. but always when you got to the first tee, it's yeah. dead quiet. Yeah, it was yeah. always dead quiet. Yeah, you know. You used to almost get a fright when someone announced your name on a microphone. You're like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? You know, now you've got music blaring through a speaker, every tee box, every green, which is amazing. But the first week in Mexico, I'll tell you what, I was like, I was almost too happy, too happy. Go I was dancing down the fairway. You, it was you. like kind of like yeah. really, really got enjoying cool it. I actually it. found it hard to concentrate and because it, messes it was… What, uh, messes up with your routine. Exactly, and your mm. rhythm. But then now I hardly hear the music, you know. I, I don't know what it is. You just, I, I suppose it's like crowds. Yeah. Something you don't teach, you know, that pressure of having crowds around yes. you and people watching. You just get used to it. Um, so that was certainly an adjustment. Unless Obviously, you're a real banger and it like catches yeah, you. Yeah, it catches you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You still, you still Calm go down, down Dean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get back in your zone, you know, yeah. get into your, you know, get into your routine. Get, yeah. you know. That's true. I mean, and there's some bangers. There's some good ones, you know. I mean, yeah, and then shotgun start, um, that was something, that was something unique. You know, the logistics of all of that, having to change your whole warm up routine to be ready 20, 25 minutes before your tee off time, you've got to be ready because you've got to get in a golf cart and, yeah, and drive. And drive. You know, some guys are off the first day lucky, they can carry on with their normal routine. But again, you're normal, normally ready to be, to get into that golf cart 25 minutes before, and now you're in the final group on a Sunday. 
and the yeah, tee box is right there. Now you've got to kind of change again. So there's that dynamic that you have to juggle a little bit. Um, but it, I think the the best thing about the shotgun start, I know it can be tough to follow, I think, um, but for us, is everyone plays in the same conditions yes. all the time. There's yeah. no luck of the draw. Oh, I didn't actually think about that. So You're right. the best golfer wins generally Correct. week in, week out. Yeah. The guy who plays the best wins. There's no yeah. luck of the draw. I mean, if you go look at the Open Championship, there's always a favorable yeah. draw. Yeah, yeah. every time. Especially, yeah. especially when it's at a Lynx golf course yeah. and it's coastal winds and you know yeah. all of that. You can lose the golf uh, golf tournament just being on the wrong side yeah, of the draw. Yeah. Louis speaks about it all the time when he won the Open. You know, he was on the right side of the draw. Mm. Rory had to go out that second day, and yeah. you know, after shooting, I think sixty three or whatever he did the first day, he went out that second day, and you know, I think he shot a great seventy seven. Mm. You know, and it was a really good score. But that's that's the beauty of Lynx golf, and that's the beauty of the Open Championship. Um, mm. But we where we as we all have the same conditions. Um, the best player wins in the week. Exactly, that's that's a great thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the it's a incredible dynamic. So now at the moment between Liv and the PGA, where do we stand with all of that? Jeez, who knows? Is that <laughs> your guess is as good as mine? So I suppose we know as much as what we always also see. You know, there's, I mean, there's big talk at some stage. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation and there's a lot going okay. on. But to be honest, I think they've been told they need to keep it quiet, okay. and I think it's a good thing. Um, because we don't want all the rumors flying around. Yeah. Because mm. there would be. There would yes. be so many rumors about what would be happening. Um, but either way, I look at it either way. Um, if the merger doesn't happen, something along those lines will happen eventually. Yeah. Golf is much bigger than all these leagues and tours fighting. Yeah. I don't and think pride, it's necessary. Yeah. You know, the products are so different. And you ask people who come and watch. I've had people, certain players have actually even come and watched live events and said they, they're actually not too stressed out because it's such a different dynamic everything is just so different it's um it's targeted at a much younger crowd it's it's more modern modern exactly mm. you know and and there's a place for that yeah but there's a place for yeah natural four yeah. round competition yeah. heat of the battle golf as well yeah. you have to make the cut get through get into sunday try and win the tournament yeah you know there's there's a, there's always been a place for that so live, I think, is just kind of filling in the T20 version of, you know, of golf. That's basically what the way I see it. They've got more music, you know, T20 cricket has dances and fireworks and all things going on. And look what that's done for cricket. Look what it's done for Test cricket, yeah. which was the yeah, old yeah, version yeah. of Test cricket. Yeah. Test cricket has yeah. become exciting again. So yeah. I think eventually, like like I said, I think if if it doesn't happen now, the merger, eventually there'll be something along those lines. Yeah. Well, that's my hope anyway. I also really hope that eventually um, there's a South African event. Yeah, yeah, on the live big time. I, yeah. I can say, I mean, just between us and the podcast and the viewers, everyone else is watching. That there's something in the works, and we're working really hard on, on trying to get an event here, and we want to bring some of the best players in the world here. You know, and certainly the four of us. I feel like. The four of us are going to be playing at Leopard Creek um, in All a couple of weeks. Playing at Leopard. Yeah. I didn't know Louis. Yeah, that yeah. Play. Louis coming for Leopard Creek, and he's playing Mauritius as well at his golf course okay. that he designed there. So, yes. All four of us are at Leopard Creek, which is quite exciting. And then, um, yeah, we we're certainly working on on getting the likes of Dustin Johnson and yeah. Bryson and Brooks and Cam Smith, and uh, among others, to to get down here and and play in a live South Africa. There's a couple of good uh, good golf courses in South Africa that could host an event like that. Yeah, we're yeah, very fortunate. Yes, we Slavia. definitely have the, the the resources and the and the and the foundations and to the do space. that. Yeah, mm. I think um, you know between uh, a lot of golf in South Africa has been played up here for so long. I think it would be great to get an event down in the coast. You know, yeah, back to Cape Town yeah. or mm. Pearl even Valley. Durban. Yeah, I think Pearl Valley would be an amazing venue. Pearl yeah. Valley, to be would honest. Be so if they're listening. Hit us yeah, up. please. Just <laughs> all, 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 all the homeowners. It's music for a week, and then it's gone. Then it's gone. <laughs> but it's only for five hours yeah, a day. So I can fine. tell you now, not a single home, um, unless there's a car in, you know, which I'm assuming that Paul Valley is a couple. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. one's going to moan about and the aura quiz. So we'll have to. I mean, we'll have to wait and see how it all pans out. But there's certainly something in the works, and we're working really hard on on that, amongst other things for for us as a brand yeah. so it's cool so the four players you just big mentioned DJ you know Brooks and them Bryson the and and Phil and them 
I don't mean, want you to speak for them, but what are what are they like, and have has have they got any regrets on what this big move done? And so, the way I can probably explain that is, um, I think if you went to ask any one of the players on Live Golf, would they go back and play on the PGA? I think everyone would say no. Okay, that would be my answer. That's what I would say. Yes. Uh, I honestly think Live is it's kind of the the top echelon reward for everybody who's put in the hours and put yes. in the work and now they're able to still compete do what they love but have fun yeah and um, and play a little less you know for a little bit more I don't think there's there's anything wrong with that so you know DJ I think answered it once he says why wouldn't I go anybody else if you were offered another CEO job yeah for less hours in a week for double the pay would you take it yeah mm. everyone would say yes yeah so. It's only controversial in, in golf all of a sudden, but this, these decisions get made daily in exactly. any other industry. It's a no-brainer decision, to be honest. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, I think so. I think the only guys down. that might, and I'm not speaking on behalf of them, but the guys that fall out at the end of the season, obviously it's a touchy or weird mm. dynamic to be in now, because where do you go? Yeah. You know? Well, fortunately, look, Liv's relationship with the Asian tour... Um, you get offered a two-year exemption to go and play in the Asian Tour. Gotcha. So you have okay. somewhere to go. Okay. Because they also own a big part of the Asian yeah, Tour. So, yeah, so that helps. You know, and those international series events are only going to get bigger and better. I mean, yeah. I was fortunate. I played in a couple in the UK this year, and they were they were great events. They were put on really well. Um, the golf courses were in good condition. And I, I think that relationship, when it tightens up, and gets better, and the plan is for those international events to get to, you know, four or five million dollar events. You're going to have guys from Corn Ferry Tour and yeah. DP World Tour and stuff wanting to come and play those events. So, mm. because at the end, there's a carrot. You win that order of merit, you get into Live Golf. Yeah. You know? And then you do well in that order of merit, you get to go to the final qualifying event and only play in the last two rounds. Yes. And there's three spots up for grabs. So, you got, you got opportunities to go and seriously, seriously make something. Make something. Mm. Make some generational wealth and do something. Before we get on to a bit of the sunshine, just the last question on Liv. How does it work? Um, how do you stay in the team? So, in the beginning, um, everyone was kind of offered contracts. So, when your contract's up, the year your contract's up, you've got to finish inside the top 24 to guarantee your place. Okay. Um, and then the, the captain of that team then has the option. So, you're guaranteed the top 24 to have a place regardless of what team you go got to. You, got you. But more often than not, the way I see it is the, the captain's always going to offer you the spot okay. because you'd be a top performer in his team if you're yeah. top 24. Um, then if you are 25 to 44, I think it is, yeah, to 44, um, then you go into what they call like a draft window or a, a trade kind of window. Then you, they have the captain has an, offer, an option to renew your contract for one more year. If so he by feels, captain's choice? By captain's okay, choice, okay. and probably the board of each team. Each team okay. has their own board. Okay. I think they'll make a, a decision. Um, if not, another captain can also offer you a contract if you're in there, in that space. You know, there's certain guys. I think like a uh, Graham McDowell was in there this year. Um, Pat Perez, he just got re-signed by the Four Aces. So I think DJ just offered him an extension on his contract for a year. Um, and then you know the bottom four guys, unfortunately, have to leave. Because you have to make way for new guys. Those, those spots I mentioned, the winner of the international series and then the three qualifying places. So, so the bottom four, unfortunately, you don't get any renewal. And then um, if there are extra open spots in your team, that could be filled by anyone. Okay. So anybody can put their you know, resume forward yeah. to a Brooks Kepka, for instance, who's going to have a, a spot in his team or a Martin Keim has got a couple spots in his team. You know, so you can go as a captain, you can go and do your homework and not poach anyone, but you could go and ask around and see who would be interested and see if you can offer them a year contract and whether they'd come or not. Um, but yeah, for, for the Stingers, we locked up for this year coming up. So that's exciting. 24 and then 25, we'll see. Hopefully none of us finish in the bottom four and then we'll be locked up again. Locked up again. So rumor has it that there was an Aussie trying to poach you. There was for a little bit, um, but Louis <laughs> laughed that off pretty quickly. Yeah. The bloody Aussies, where it's like all the guys moving to Australia <laughs> yeah, and they poaching now. Cricket, they can't get us in rugby now. They're trying to get us. Gone. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I played with Cam Smith in Tucson, which was I think my second or third week out, 
And he went straight to Louis and he said, listen, yeah, for next season, what's it going to cost me if, if Dean wants to come? I like the way he plays golf. So, you know, I don't know if that was a little bit that's of banter a, or anything. That's but, also a compliment. But yeah, it, was a, it was a massive compliment for me. That was quite a boost for me. Yeah. Um, because I, watched, I think I watched him chip in three times that day. So it was, uh, you know, I was kind of mind blown. But, um, yeah, Louis laughed it off and said, no, there's, there's no chance. He's in for me. He's with us next year. So it was nice to know that Louis had my back too. <laughs> Listen, so just onto some financial stuff, um, and financial being a little bit of the dynamics between the tours. Um, firstly, you spoke off, off record here, or, or uh, before we started here this morning about penalties and how it works to come and play now the co-sanctioned events with the DP tour. Yeah. Just take us through that dynamic. Yeah, so obviously, look, when I moved to live, I still had hopes of playing on the DP World Tour, so I kept my membership. I didn't resign immediately. Um, because there was a court case looming and everything. And I was, you know, I was hope, I was very hopeful that, um, DP World Tour might lose that case and that would give me the opportunity to go back and support the tour and play. Um, whether they liked that or not, I wasn't sure. But, you know, f from my, my standpoint, I wanted to play in these events, support South Africa. Um, and then on top of that, there were, there's very special events and relationships I've made over the years in Europe with people, um, that I would love to support and play in those events. So that was my thinking. But unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately or unfortunately, the DP World Tour won that case. Um, and then I was liable for fines. Um, so after they won that case, they then sent me a document with uh, the amounts of fines that I had to pay for the five events I think I'd played up to that date. I then resigned after that, so I was only liable for those five events. So if I ever wanted to play on the DP World Tour, uh, I had to pay my fine, um, which was, you know, £250,000 um, to tee it up in certain events. And in order to support Mr. Rupert um, at the Daniel Links, which he was very kind enough to give me an invite into, I, um, I then ended up negotiating a deal with Liv and everyone else to get that fine paid. And that got me the opportunity to play. So um, now, obviously, after this week, who knows? I've obviously got a category on the DP World Tour again <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm one to take it. So I don't know what this, the next step forward is. So I think we'll be in in, con in conversations with everyone and see what the, the best step forward is. But obviously, I'd love to support the tour and support the Sunshine Tour. They've been so great to me over the years. You know, they gave me a, a front foot um, and... I still got amazing relationships today, you know, Salwa Nathan, Thomas Apt, Mr. Johan Rupert, um, you know, the late Sam Hackner, yeah. you know, I've still got a, a great relationship with his son, Gary. And, um, you know, for, for all of that to kind of just fizzle out because I, cho I made a decision for my family, I think was unfair. So I'm very fortunate that they have stayed open to us playing and uh, gave me the opportunity to win this lovely trophy. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we just breezed past that type of stuff, but I mean, 250,000 euros uh, penalties. It's uh, amazing because, you know, you're, you guys are so humble. And I think South Africans around the world, you know, if, even if you look at the, 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 the previous generation of legends in South African golf, everybody's so exceptionally humble. But, I mean, the money that you throw around there, it's millions and millions of rands that you now yeah. work in your life with. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that comes with the territory. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very giving sport you know there are very select few that get to that yeah. that kind of echelon of the game but if you do and i'll say this to all kids who are watching you know if you do stick to your guns and you do work through it i mean it's tough the the first off knows he's he played for a long time on the sunshine tour and we played a lot together um and eric you know and we we all kind of grew up in the same sort of sort of era and it's you know there's a bit of luck involved you get your opportunities. And if you take those opportunities and that little bit of luck, then you get rewarded. And that's the game. You know, golf is, golf is like life. It's tough. You have your ups and downs, your knocks. And there's more downs than ups. Um, you know, a, a golfer is a professional loser. He's a guy who's lost a lot. A winner is somebody who's learned out of losing. And, um, every time you win, you should seriously, seriously, cher like cherish it and, and enjoy that time. Yeah. Um, because they don't come around too often. There's very few that it comes around to every year. So, um, yeah, I will say that to kids, stick, stick to your guns and it will reward you. Even if it's not as financially benefiting as you think it is in the beginning, 
if you keep doing it, you'll, you'll get there, you know. And um, with golf growing as much as it is, it's one of the only sports since COVID that's growing yeah. as fast yeah. as it is. Yeah. The money and, and the financial benefits are just going to get more and more and more. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah, and for both men and women at the exactly. moment, it's just an acceleration. Oh, you just look at like, you know, what Ash Buha has yeah. been able to achieve yeah. in the last yeah. couple of years, you know. she's she's She was kind enough to send me a message yesterday and, Shame. you know, I mean – She's done amazing things for the for South African ladies golf and Pacey's done well again yeah. this year and yeah. you know the ladies European tour and Nicole Garcia and yeah. Cass Cassandra Alexander yeah, yeah. you know she's the, third now eh? sitting <coughs> on the European tour third on the money list I believe is that right though? Yeah. I'm not too sure yeah. she's got five yeah. yeah so it's amazing I've you know just, a round of golf with her just before. going back she's incredible going back to the financial aspect I mean when you grew up started on the Sunshine Tour. I mean, the financial aspect was, let's call it, part of playing professional yeah. golf, but it wasn't your everything, right? No. Um, you know, my advice to kids, if you're going to play for a glamorous lifestyle, you're going to get hit hard very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because to get to, to that reality. point in time is 10 years or so of grinding. Right? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you exactly how I started. So, I mean, look, we lost our farm in Zimbabwe. We came to South Africa with not a lot. Yeah, Maturi. Yeah, and... Um, we came with not a lot. We're fortunate enough. My dad got a job in Bloom and we went to Bloom and I was fortunate enough to go to a great school, um, which gave me kind of a front foot. And, you know, that school is, is really supportive of, of all their, all their students that come out of that school, which is amazing. And, um, you know, I went to a golf academy for two years, paid my dues. You know, I was waiting tables at night, practicing golf during the day. <clears throat> That's what I did. And I did that for two years and my dad helped pay. My parents helped pay for that. And, but I had a two year, I had a two year window. That's all I had. And, um, I, I got to Q school in Val de Grace and Paris and I got through, got my card. And, um, the rest is kind of history in a way. You know, I kept my card the first year, but I still waited tables that, that whole first year I waited tables just to pay to get to events. So I missed, you know, numerous events that I couldn't go and pre qualify for because I didn't have the money. Yeah. I had to go and waiter and, pay my dues and I did that and I practiced and I practiced hard I'll tell you we used to have these crates of balls at Skumon Park there were 500 balls in a crate and I remember standing there with JB Kruger you know 7 o'clock in the morning in the winter in Bloom let me tell you what it's it's cold yeah Yeah, you're having a cup of coffee and you had a little plastic coke bottle with boiling water just to keep your hands warm yeah Yeah, and used to hold that as a little hand warmer and off you went hit your 500 balls stop for lunch go chip and putt go play nine holes that was it that was my day it was a daily routine for you know a good three years and then um i started to play better and better and better i had a really good year in the big easy tour which you know ernie and uh and yeah. a few other guys started and that was that gave me a lot of confidence and then then i won on the sunshine tour yeah and which was um, your 2014? first event uh Kwan, i was just gonna say Kwan, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's a i have an amazing story about that actually um Please tell us. Well, yeah, just before that, I actually got sponsored by Sam Hackner and Investec. Um, I played in Royal Swazi and I think I finished third or fourth. And, um, you know, he, he gave me a sponsorship, which again, that stopped me from waiting tables. You know, that gave me the opportunity to actually just give golf like a full time go. And then, um, my grandfather got diagnosed with cancer, terminal cancer, uh, about three, four months before the Paul O'Connor Classic. And he was going, um, he was here in Joburg actually for his last treatment of chemo before heading back to Botswana where my parents then moved to. Um, and on the way there, the way they explained it, there was a T-junction. I was four behind Titchmore going into the last day and Titch was playing great. But they got to a T-junction and to turn left, you went to Botswana and to turn right, you went to Paul O'Connor. And they got there, and my dad was about to turn left, and my grandfather said, there's no ways. Turning there's right. no ways we're turning right. We're going to go watch. And, I mean, I get goosebumps just mm. talking about it. And they turned right, and they were about in – I'd just finished my second round, and they phoned me, and they said, we're on our way. Is there any way for us to stay? And the guys that I'd played with had all missed the cut. So in the, like, Airbnb that we'd booked, um, there was a, there were a couple of rooms available. So I said, yeah, pull in. I'm the only one here. And they came and stayed and we went to Mug and Bean that night and all my grandfather could stomach was a little bit of broth and some water. And um, he walked all 18 holes. And in those days, we didn't uh, even have the ropes on the side. There was not even water on the golf course. There wasn't, yeah, there was nothing. You know, no. we used to have the little Coleman's on the, yeah. you know, on the golf course with a plate with like a styrofoam yeah, cup that yeah. you would put your water in. 
And, um, yeah, he walked all 18 holes right next to me that whole day. And I ended up winning the tournament by four. What a special and, one. And, uh, I mean, tears eh? mm. on that 18th green. I'd never won, you know, I didn't even win on the Big Easy Tour. I think, it's, you know, that year I had, I had five second places, you know. Never won as a professional. And uh, that was it. That was the first win. And that was... That was the start of, you know, my self-belief and my, okay, I can do this. You know, I beat Titch, who was one okay. of the best amateurs yeah, that our country's ever, 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 you know, proved, proven and taken through. And then he's played in Europe and played all over the world. And, and to beat a guy that I looked up to was, was special. And he was a really, really gracious, you know, loser. And he was, I'll never forget, he shook my hand and he says, you know what, you deserve it. You're a hell of a player. And, I look forward to seeing what happens next for you. And um, for someone like that, again, to say stuff like that, that's special. And, um, yeah, I sat in the in the bar afterwards, had a beer with my dad, and Retief Kusin's brother was there, and we had a beer. And and then uh, I, uh, I kind of shed a little tear and yeah, of course. got in the car with a couple of mates and drove back to Bloom, and they went to Botswana. That was it. That was the end of that victory. And then, you know, a few years later, I managed to kick on and, do some more special things, which is cool. Would you say that's one of your most special wins? I'd say as yeah. as far as wins go, I mean, take the money out of it and take yeah, everything yeah. out yeah, of it. Yeah. That was probably that's... my most special one, yeah. Because one, it was my first. You never forget your first win. And two, just because of the the situation and, and what they did, you it's know. The moment. That moment, you know. I'll never get that back. He's not with us anymore. And I think about that all the time. He was a very, very special man. You know, the... <clears throat> that ability to put your mind to it for 18 holes for him to walk that I can just imagine the pain that went through it yeah. you know for him to have that that mindset to be able to support you like that it's so fortunate that you had that type of dynamics and you know and not that we're naming any people but family dynamics is a challenge you know yeah. it's not always easy and for you to have that type of support it's certainly part of your success today yeah without um Without my parents and my grandparents, I wouldn't be where I am today, yeah. for sure. They um, they gave up so much, you know, for me and, and my career when I was younger and, you know, moved moved to Botswana to earn a better salary far away from myself and my brother, yeah. but just to give us an opportunity yeah. to both try and play golf, you know. The salary they were earning here in South Africa wasn't wasn't enough for that, you yeah. know. My brother was in the Ernie Alston fan court foundation, so my parents were preparing for him to turn professional and, and try and do the same thing I did, you know. So, yeah, they they did a, they sacrificed a lot, and my grandparents as well, you know, having to you know leave Zimbabwe and do all of that and go through go through all of that was were trying times. But um, they they did that to give my brother and I the best opportunity to be what we could be, and um, we've both turned out pretty good. So very very grateful and thankful. Shame to all the parents that are probably still going through that at the moment. Their child is at a particular point. Thank you to all of those parents that yeah. are brave, and hopefully one day your son or daughter can sit here on this chair or a chair and yeah. thank you in the most gracious way that you just did. That would uh, that would be very, 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 very special for me. Um, now that I'm a dad, I, I think I understand Stand it more than ever. Mm, yeah. yeah, and I say always as I get an older dad, you know, and um, 41 year old dad, for me as that, <clears throat> it's amazing how much more they mean to you. And my mom's 70th was on Saturday, and one of the moments I just said to her. I now have some more insight, not fully yet, as to all the little moments and the sacrifices and the things that we just took for granted, what they had to do in order to make that happen and, and, and put you in a position to, to have some success in life. Exactly. You know, um, you, you don't realize all the small things until you, you sit down and you actually, you know, when I speak to my dad and we have a little one to one and a heart to heart and, you know, the stuff that they, the stuff that they did, you know, whether it was, being really firm and harsh yeah, with me yeah, 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 yeah. or it was being lenient and kind of giving me my own reins. Yeah. Um, you don't understand that fully until you become a parent and yeah. your kids 100%. get to that age and, and you realize what's, what's needed and what's best for them, you know, cause every, every person's different and every human is different. So yeah. it's pretty, it's a pretty cool thing to go through as a, as a human being. It's, yes. it's pretty special. Sam, so, well, thank you for sharing that with us. But Arthur, you, you have some beef. 
Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say we need to, to, we, need to, we, need to <laughs> we need to get off the serious like topic a, now. I feel it's like an elephant in the room, yeah. Yeah, since, you, you since since walked in the door. About it this morning, I you, couldn't sleep about it because it haunts <laughs> me still to this day. Um, <laughs> but I think I don't know if I've got the date right. I was thinking about it last night. I think it was two thousand and seven. Yeah. In East London, we had national schools events. So all the top schools come together. Um, from each province and play yeah. against each other, right? And um, where was this now? In East London, East London West, yeah. West Bank, Bank. Yeah, West, West Bank. Bank after, yeah. yeah. And I will never forget this. We finished the last. I think we played thirty six, thirty six, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's seventy two holes over two days. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Dean. It probably golf was his fourth sport, and it was my first sport. Mm. Um, I remember he had his birdie putt. What was fishing his? Is, 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 was the fishing well the he's mentioned cricket so I'm sure there was <laughs> rugby yeah, or hockey yeah. involved cricket and probably and badminton because that's big cricket, and yeah, great cricket and hockey I mean I, 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 I tried rugby but I tell you what at great college you, <laughs> you, you gotta, gotta be, be a big boy say, if you, you wanna play rugby boy. I wasn't a very big boy so yeah. I gave that up very quickly <laughs> and I still remember you had um, a birdie putt from probably 10 5 10 meters off the green up yeah. the slope 4 5 meters on and it was downhill past the hole yeah and he needed, I got the story wrong, but he rectified it earlier. So he needed to two putt to win. Yeah. Which I didn't see happening when he chose the putter. Yeah. Because I would have chipped it. And. Was you, were you happy in that moment? I was super happy. I thought, okay, <laughs> we've got a chance, um, for a three putt. And the minute he hit that, I was like, no, this thing's gone. This thing's, no, this thing's nowhere near. It's gone. Like it was steamy as anything. Mm. And it hit the flag and just dropped and. He screwed up my CV for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's where the wiper was originated from? Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, depressed. On but you guys, that was a special moment for you guys. I remember that on the green. Yeah, it was cool. The two we, twins and Butte, eh? And Yeah, Butte and uh, another guy, Paul Colditz, yeah. Mm. So uh, one of the twins was our, our reserve. Um, but yeah, I mean, to go on that day, I remember a lot about that day. Um, because it's at West Bank... A lot of the holes, I think when you're playing 11, you get the holes, you know, you get 12, then 13 comes back, then 14 goes down, then 15 comes back, then 16 goes down. And so when you're on 11, I was walking down the fairway and I could see everybody else. And when I walked down the fairway, I think 14 is the par three. And one of the twins, Andre, hit a hole in one as I was walking down the fairway. Mm. Hit it in the hole. And then I've, I, I mean, goosebumps again. Yeah. It's crazy. And then I, I made a couple of birdies, and then, like you said, on 18, I hit the fairway, and then I, a little bit of adrenaline over club badly, nearly hit it in the clubhouse. And yeah, I remember pulling that putter, and geez, I remember everyone standing, you know, from our team and parents, and everyone standing on the side of the green there up on the hill. And like you said, I, I hit the putt, and all I, I remember telling myself, just, you just gotta give it a chance. You don't wanna leave it short of the green. Just no, get just it on the green, back, give yeah, yourself yeah. a chance yeah, for yeah, the two yeah. putt. Yeah. Took a couple bounces and then hit the green with some speed. Mm. And I was like, oh, no. And then it carried on breaking, hit the flag and went in. And I was like, that was a total surprise. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, so you're almost in shock. You're like, I just want to get it somewhere there yeah, so yeah, I can yeah, have, yeah. A, you know, have a chance. And yeah, that was cool. I mean, from there, we, we went on to the international school team, uh, team championships in Sun City. And we lost out to a school from England. So we were nearly the world school champions. Yeah. From that, so I was. I think we would have got the jump down. I think you, yeah, you know, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well done to you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah thanks. The so, right thing shame. One, yeah, of, one of my teammates is no longer with us yeah, anymore, Buta. Buta, yeah, which is a shame. Eh? One of the most talented oaks. Yeah, crazy. he was like the big easy of Bloom. Yeah, he was yeah. so cool, eh? massive yeah. guy, but massive guy. Shame we'll shout out to Buta. Yeah, mm. and his family. Yeah, yeah. They're really, really cool. They're in Fentersberg. Uh, That's where they're from, eh? Yeah, sheep farmers from out there. Sam Fentersburg, you must be South African to be able to pronounce that one. Yeah, no, it's many years in the Free State. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're Free State base in Grey Bloom. Yeah. Um, but the, the, when you come to South Africa, you're such a great supporter of the Sunshine too. I mean, now, now we know, even willing to pay uh, millions of rands of penalties in order to do so. But why are you, because it's like Eric as well, he said it on his podcast as well, and he says he always wants to come back and, 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 and support the tour. What's your reasons? So, my reason is one, obviously I love coming home. Yeah. That's first and foremost. I think um, if you take golf out of it, just coming to South Africa is, is really relaxing. Yeah. Just coming back and 
spending time with family, having a nice braai, yeah. proper braai with the right spices and a wood and some wood. That's, All you know. four of them chose braai for the meal for the rest of yeah. their lives. Yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> got to be braai. Um, but from a golf's perspective, I was a young kid at Bloom and there used to be a Vodacom Origins event that always used to go there. And I used to change the scoreboards and walk with the, you know, walk stand bearer and get given golf balls but from the likes of Mark Kayu, um, Hendrik Bierman, you know, yeah. Grant Muller, um, you know, Mark Merlis, Warren Avery, Bradford Vaughan, you know, I can go down the list, Titch, mm. you know, guys I looked up to. I mean, Viley, Viley you know, I mean, seriously good players, Darren Dez Fickard, Dez, Uncle Dez, you know, I was that guy looking up to those those guys and that was just in bloom a winter tour event um so to have the opportunity to be that guy you know like yesterday i don't know how many golf balls i gave away yesterday but i know that that even if it just helps one kid yeah Mm, that's going to help the game of golf in south africa yeah and um i hope i really hope it does you know i'm i'm very privileged to be in that position to give back and as long as i can do that i'll i'll certainly do that and i'll always come back so it was a good crowd yesterday as well yeah. Um, and in, you know, obviously a week of just tremendous heat over the weekend. It's also not an easy golf course no. to get access no. to with parking and stuff no. like that. Yeah. So no. it is a bit of a mission. It is, yeah. So shout out to all the spectators for making yeah. the effort. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of kids too. So mm. shout out to the parents for bringing their kids out for yeah. sure. It was great to see so many young boys and, and girls out there and and to hear them actually. You know, yeah, and you actually can hear walk them on around the team, yeah. yeah. And actually walk around, you know. I mean, I had so many kids actually walking. A golf course. I mean, it's not the easiest walkout in a lot of hills. But I had a lot of kids walk, you know, almost the full 18 with Tristan and I yesterday. So it was it was pretty special. Sure. Um, if you don't mind, Dave, just a just a quick one because I know a little bit on the on the tour. But it seems like you really know when to switch it on from a mindset perspective. Now, in golf, I think most amateurs by now, if you've played a while. We, we get, we understand that on the day, it's going to be the one with the right mindset, you know, waking up the right way, you know, mentally prepared for it, whatever that might be, what that gets you to get that focus. Yeah. Because everybody walking onto that course on any given day will be able to shoot the 62. They're all good enough. Yeah. They're all good enough. That's why they're there. A hundred percent. But what is, you know, what is, what is from, from, from such a, a player like you, how do you control that mindset? Um, I think management is probably the right word. Many management. management. Okay. So like, um, knowing that everybody's human. Yeah. Everybody's going to get nervous. I yeah. don't care who you are. Uh, you can be Brooks Kepka, ice cold. Yeah. I can tell you right now that he might not get nervous every week he plays. Yeah. But he definitely gets nervous. And he won the PGA this this year. Yeah. He was definitely nervous, but he just found his way to control that. And I think I have my own ways to do that. I'm lucky enough to have a good team um, and a really good psychologist who helped me, you know, get me into the right frame of mind. But if I had advice to, to an amateur or anybody else, you know, if you've got nerves, you've got to hit in front of 20 people on the first tee because I know it's nerve-wracking. And especially if you don't practice like we practice. Um, my advice is honestly just breathe. Mm. Just breathe. Take a deep breath. They can say whatever they want. I mean, they yeah. can't control what's going on inside you. Only yeah. you can. Yeah. Breathe. Focus on what you can do. What's right in front of you. First and foremost, hit it. Strike it. You know that's important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just breathe. Breathe. Take your time. And in, I mean, enjoy it. Like those nerves and the butterflies. Like for kids and whoever you know who are competing and playing all over the country. Honestly, that that's a good thing. That means you care. And if you care about something, it means you you're willing to give up everything to. Mm to do it and achieve that. So nerves are, are super, super important. I think when the nerves are gone, then you need over. to stop playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, in my opinion. So use them. Use the nerves. Take a deep breath. Focus Yesterday on the and target, focus. not the bush. Exactly. All I think about, honestly, all I think about is my target. I don't mm. think about a swing thought. I don't okay, think yeah, about I was, no, anything. anything. I don't think about anything. When I'm playing golf, I try and think about as little as possible. I try and keep my Routine, the exact same time, every time. Don't rush it. Don't slow it down. Keep it all the same. You know, don't let a guy hitting it out of bounds and having to hit another one, or don't let you waiting on a tee box affect you. You don't start your routine until it's your turn to hit. So those things are important. 
and um, yeah, enjoy the ride. I mean, it's just a game. Mm. It's and it's a hard game. When you realize how hard the game really is, you know, then it'll help you be a better player because it is a hard game. So make notes for club champs, eh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's sort of my mindset as well. <laughs> so I can see where he's where he's. This is all this personal from. game for you. It's all personal, you. you know what I mean? When I, it's, it's pretty much where my pro mindset myself is. <laughs> but then you, what what's haunts you? And and I don't mean to ask these things, but you guys, and especially you know, call it there's about fifteen of them. That's got this incredible. You know, even this morning, you know, I know Arthur and you know each other very well. And it's now far less for me. But I also got nervous that you were coming, you know, and how I prepare for it and how I take a care of that nervousness as I try and prepare for it as much yeah. as possible. You know, but then we, we, you know, nine out of ten times don't really stick to everything because yeah. it's natural conversation. But your, what haunts you in your career at the moment? Is there a day, a shot, a moment? I mean, you know, there's probably a few. Um... I mean, haunt is a your haunt is a quite, strong that's a, that's word. That's a dark word. It's a dark word. But I've I've definitely lost sleep over over a few tournaments. Um, there was a Joburg Open, Darren Ficott won, but I was leading going into the back nine and I exploded. And uh, I remember that for a long time, and I used that because the next week I won Swanee Open. Yeah. But I used that, and I remember that. That's something I always remember is when I whenever I'm in, I'm in contention and I hit a bad shot is to not explode because that exploding and that, that made me shoot two or three over on the back nine and I ended up finishing third. That cost me that tournament. But that trying to open, you dominated I mean, from dominated. the Finally Sunday opened, but I used shot. that on that Sunday yeah. because I was in contention that Sunday and I just said, right, I am not, I'm going to do my utmost best on every single golf shot until the last shot. Yeah. And I ended up winning by six or whatever mm. it was, you know, shot an amazing 29 in the front nine and I was just, from there it was just cruise control. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, I use that, and I remember that, and I always remember that. So uh, that, that negative nine. turned into a very good positive, yeah, for yeah. life. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I mean, a winner is just a guy who lo- who learned how to losing. Yeah, that's all it is, and you lose a lot. Yeah. So um, there's definitely that that uh, that haunts me quite a little bit. Well, haunt. I no, definitely no, I think about what, it, and I yeah, use it. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, and I and I and I. You're right. I lose haunt a little bit loosely. But it doesn't really matter in which career you took on. You know, there's always something. But if you know how to use it yeah. and you remember it not for the negativity of it, but more of the positivity that it brings you for the future, mm. it becomes a, a great thing to learn. Exactly. And uh, learning is key in life. I think learning and giving, those are the two things you should do. try and do every single day of your life. Yeah. So just on a personal level, um, because I know y- your wife is Mal, I don't want to mention your kids' names. So that's up to you. Um, but that dynamic for you now with Liv and, and all of that, that's a vitally important thing for you. And where would you say is your fishing and your, yeah. and your family? Where do you balance those yeah, two? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm <laughs> where's lost. your favorite fishing spot? As yeah, well? I was oh, to oh, the Zambezi River has got to oh, be my favorite tiger. place. Yeah. Oh, so tiger and Bream. Um, you know, Zambezi was amazing. Uh, Kariba's... Also, just it's just a yeah. special, special place, you know. And then offshore, I was, I was fortunate enough to go and do some bluefin tuna fishing in Tenerife. I tell you what, that was incredible. But I just bought a, bought a house in Florida, or we bought a house, the family bought a house in Florida, and I can walk out of my back garden and do some bass fishing, so I'm in heaven now. Oh, my so, word. So I'm very lucky. So I'm able to balance it now. It's been the last sort of four or five years, my fishing's taken a bit of a back seat. Yes. Um, Please, can you teach Eric how to fish? <laughs> I'll work on it. Please. I'll work on it. Yeah, he's over the road from me. You know, he's two minutes away from me. I so heard. It's great. Arthur told me, yeah. So it's exciting. So I'll, uh, if I can't teach him, I'll certainly teach his, his little man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these are someone in the family who can fish, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, family time, I think family time and the live, live dynamic um, is super cool. Yeah. Like my eldest, Jordan, he's in a school now. And, uh, in, in Florida and, um, you know, they go Monday to Friday, but then because we're playing predominantly in and around America, they can come on the weekends, yeah. you know, Friday after school, they catch a flight and they're there Saturday, Sunday, and we all travel back and he goes back to school Monday, you know, only playing 14 weeks in a year. Um, even if we take him out a day here and a day there to travel a little further, if we're playing on the West coast or something, you know, it's, it's not really effective to school. So, um, 
that 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 makes it really easy and and my little man alex he's he is uh he runs the home so he's a, <laughs> he's a little rock star and and to be able to actually be more involved in their life now is is super cool you know so that that's probably the greatest thing about making my decision is being able to see my family they probably travel you know nine out of the 14 weeks with me so oh, that's awesome that's yeah. pretty cool so it's um whereas on the pj tour and so all, years all before i was you know 30 plus weeks every year yeah. and you know if, if they did 10 or 12 that was a lot in school holidays and you know to to not give my kids a real holiday and school holidays almost felt unfair they were always traveling to golf tournaments and you know if, we don't do a lot of golf tournaments as golfers you're in the hotel golf course they might do something one day a week, but that's it. So uh, now I get the opportunity to take my kids to Disney World and do whatever because we've got time. Yeah. The Just two things there for me before I go on to the last part, which is just a few quick questions you can answer for us in, in singular form. But the your, your team dynamic at, at Stinger, which one of them is if you're not – Grinning, you're not winning. Or yeah, grin and grind. Grin and grind. Yeah, that's right. And I will tell you, Nay, um, I'm a, sometimes, and I didn't ever grew up at this. I'm quite a serious guy, something, especially later in my life when it comes to business and even the golf. You know, I take it. But it was just amazing that when you talk about the fun and you need to have that, but still at the time, you know, when it needs to be happen, it needs to happen. That grows the game of golf because golf does still have a reputation, and some courses, in my opinion, still accelerate that. That it's a bit like a snobbyish, hmm. you know, high society, but it's actually just a bunch of normal oaks, yeah. you know, that come to interviews and in and 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 don't really care too much about the outside world and Louis Vuitton and having to wear the fanciest brand and drive no. the fanciest car so that you can look successful from the outside. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, look the the slogan "grin and grinds" is smile first, but still do the work. Yeah. So enjoy enjoy the work. You yeah. know, that's pretty much what it is. And I think Louis personifies that more than anybody. Yeah. You know, Mr. John Deere himself. Yeah. Loves a tractor, <laughs> loves his farm, loves spending time with his girls. Loves um, a brandy. Loves a brandy. brandy. You know, loves a braai. He's just a normal guy. Yeah. He's a really, really down-to-earth human being. And he's instilled that into the whole team and the dynamic. Well, you know, everyone involved in the team from social media all the way through to yeah. management and everybody's got that mentality and you can see that when the stingers are around and we're there the the room feels like a happy place yeah so um even if you if you've had a bad day there's always someone who's gonna you know either make either make a really bad joke about your day yeah. or uh take advantage of the the opportunity yeah. but you're gonna end up laughing so if you're ready to do that then um if you come, follow, come if you follow the page yeah, I mean, absolutely. you just want to be there you and you just want to yeah. experience it and be part of it. It's yeah. unreal. But no, I mean, really we, we've been so fortunate, me and Arthur, to speak to some Springboks that's also been on this channel. And, you know, they also say, you know, you're either going to get a deep heat, you know, in your underpants you know, yeah. or a sleeping tablet, which I, I'm telling you, it's one of the funniest things ever yeah. to bump your mate with a sleeping tablet <laughs> just <laughs> before practice or something. <laughs> I mean, that's that. Yeah. But when it comes, when they need to do what they need to do, you know, they perform. But that keeps us the human. And yeah. I also for men, you know, and I say specifically for men, it just never changes. You know, when I speak to my mates, when they're 70, 80 years old, they're still the same guys. You know, their bodies might not be exactly the same, but they still want to chirp the same thing. They still, you know, enjoy the same humor between mates. And to me, when I'm in an environment like that, you just create far better performance. Yeah. You know, to make it human. But yeah. I mean, if you look, if you look at it, I mean, this is a very cliche. Yeah. But everyone wants to live. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. exactly. You know, for sure. If you're just serious, Susan, yeah, for yeah. the rest of your life, you're yeah. not living. Yeah, right? no, you're not. So it's always nice to to joke around. I love messing around and yeah. giving yeah. people shit all the time. Yes, you know, yeah. that's, that's why I say Eric can't fish. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he needs to jack his stuff up. Yeah, right? man. I mean, so, uh, it's it's important. It, I think it's something in life that you you have to do. Mm. Yeah. You know, life is too short to just worry about where where the next rand or where the next dollar is coming from, and yeah. worry about everything, and then not stopping and having a brandy or yeah. smelling the roses. I mean, yeah. a, a South African term, have a brandy. Yeah. I mean, I want to know how much Richelieu the Springboks drank 
Yeah, after the World Cup victory, because all every video yeah, of a South African speedo and yeah. a brandy was yeah, in yeah, every yeah. video. So I mean, <laughs> Malcolm Marx in that one video with JP it was just gone. Mm. I mean, Malcolm looked for the first time I saw him vulnerable yeah. at five o'clock in the morning with, yeah. with the brandy yeah. eyes and the smile and, and drinking out of the cup. And what did Damien Willems do with his kit? That's I mean, what I want to know. I did know, he ever wash it? Did he not wash it? Like that's something that should be. He might still be in it. We need to check. We need to check up on that. Well, look, that stuff is that's the stuff that you know makes yes. the Springboks great. Yeah, is to show that they're also just human. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, when you're a kid and you look up to them, man, you think these guys are like superheroes. Yeah, yeah. But then when you get older, you realize mm. they're just like us. They're yeah. dads. Yeah, they they're just guys who have really great friends that are all really good at one thing. Yeah, mm. And um, that's pretty cool. So hopefully... We can get number five. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, I tell you now between our, the golf at the moment and where we are, I mean, we were just riding a, an incredible wave, you know, despite some of the challenges we face here on a daily basis. Yeah. But I want to just ask you one more thing on the main questions that you always say if the hands could talk. Mm -hmm. you, you have a saying in that, and I've heard you say it a couple of times. Give us something that your hands can tell us that we might not know or have heard. Oh, I mean, with regards to golf or just life? Your choice. Man, um, geez, that's a, that's a Putting tricky... Putting a bit on the spot there. Well, no, not really. I, I tell you what, I can take you to the, the 150th Open. So, uh, it's probably the greatest spectacle of golf I've ever been a part of. I mean, it was incredible. One, St. Andrews. Two, the Open. Three, the 150th one. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the only, the only thing that, uh, that was probably missing was that Tiger didn't feature on the leaderboard, yeah, I yeah. think, you know. But all credit to Tiger playing, you know, yeah. just teeing it up. But I have a really, really good story about that. And, um, we were on the driving range and my caddy, Jason, is the biggest Tiger fan ever. I mean, he'll hate me for saying this, but his email address is Tiger 66 at gmail.com. <laughs> so he, you can imagine, I mean, don't don't put that on there, please. <laughs> just I mean, you can laugh about it, it. just bleep it out. <laughs> they will bleep it out. Yeah, bleep it out and have a laugh. After the Joburg Open victory, he yeah, might yeah. have a lot of DMs. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's going to have to change his <laughs> email might, address. He's to change it to Tiger.2. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just say, okay, his email address has Tiger in it. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. So, but we, um, we played the first round and... Um, we played okay. I think I shot a couple under, and um, anyway, Tiger was getting ready to go out for his afternoon tea time, and I was doing my warm down the range, and at the back of the range, in true English sports fan fashion, they were betting on which bay, because they're each numbered, yeah, right? Course. Tiger Woods was going to uh, hit balls in, and Joey LaCava, who I know I've met a few times, um, was still working for him, walked onto the range and drop the bag in the middle of the range. Because he obviously knows, you know, the guy's gonna bet. And I'll never forget this, I was in bay 22, which is my wife, that's our lucky number, um, my wife and I. For, for some reason, a two has happened in my life with everything. But I was in bay 22 and I was hitting balls and hitting balls and hitting balls. And then I got to driver and this guy behind me shouted, okay, and I, I can swear, right? Yeah, of course you yeah, can, yeah, yeah right? of course. So, uh, he says, okay, I hit one drive. And Joey LaCava had now moved the bag closer. He's now in bay 23. And this guy had obviously bet on 22. And I'd hit one tee shot and I nuked it straight down the range there. And this guy just shouted from behind. He says, okay, Boomy, that's enough. You can f*** off now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I turned around and I said, okay, as long as, as, long as I get a piece of the cut, then yeah. you know, I just need a piece. Yeah. Uh, but... Tiger then walked onto the range and I've never experienced a silence like that. You know, I've had, I've been lucky enough to have an experience with him in my first ever major at Shinnecock Hills. I slam dunked it for two on 18 and he was on the tee box behind 18's green and he gave me like a little fist bump and then in the locker room afterwards he said, that was you who hit the second shot in on 18. I said, yeah. He says, man, that was an amazing vibe. What a shot. So, you know, I've had, that's about mm. my Tiger experience. But when we got to the open, and he walked onto the range, and that silence. Then you real, I realized his aura, yeah. you know, as a as a person, yeah. as a human being. You yeah. know, people speak about that <clears throat> speak about that a lot. But even when my coach, my trainer, my caddy, my manager, 
uh, the social media people, the Sky News team, everybody or everyone who was there, stop, take out their phone and start videoing. Yeah, they knew. Everyone. And it was dead quiet. You could hear a penny drop. I mean, I stopped hitting balls because I was nervous. I was scared I was going to shank one. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Gonna, you know, and he was going to just laugh. Obviously, if I did, because he went into Bay 23 right behind so me. Right. So, you know, that that was a pretty cool story. Mm. Michael Jordan's number, you, 23? Jordan's 23. number is 23. Jordan's number is 23, yeah. He was and did you play? Did you did you warm up with him a little bit further? Yeah, I hit a few more balls with him um, after watching him for a little while and, you know, realizing he was human, he duffed one and thinned one a little bit. I was like, okay, it's fine now. <laughs> I can go back. No, I can go back and hit a few more balls. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't look so bad. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I had a few more balls and then I hung around and watched him finish his warm-up and then... I love how he to. chose... He maybe thought Tiger was going to go for 23 and he, he wanted to be next to Tiger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe that's know. a, well, that's a yeah, real story. 22 is your lucky number. Yeah. I, I did, mean, yeah. to get the bay next to Tiger and you pre-selected no, that. Yeah. 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 And it, it ended up being my best major ever, you know. Made the cut on the number, made a nice six-footer to make yeah. the cut. And then shot 65, 66 on the weekend to finish 11th, you know, mm. so it was... Because you got quite a bit of TV time on that uh, open, eh? Yeah, it was fun, eh? Yeah, uh, you got quite a bit of TV time. Yeah. I watched the highlights again of the four days on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, I was lucky. I had, a, I had good draws every day, you know, Frankie Molinari, uh, and then the, the, I can't remember the last day, but I, I had another really, like, high-ranked player, so yeah. I was always in that, like, kind of morning feature group. Yeah. So it was quite cool to get that TV time. Shame, and I, I know you've got a lot to do today, so I just want to fire a few quick ones. Yep, no problem. Okay. Favorite club? Driver. Oh, but well, you are the longest. You officially the longest. Uh, I think I was second on the live. Second on live. Yeah, yeah. You're not Peter one, but you were one at some stage. But you were one at some stage. Yeah, I think so. No, I no, you Peter were officially Uline. one. Yeah. Oh, was I? Yeah, you were officially yeah. one at some stage. But I do love my driver because it turns heads. It's fun. Yeah. It's the most fun club. <laughs> Favorite shot? I have to say a stinger, I think. Okay. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Favorite win? Um, let's go non-emotional. I mean, they're all emotional. Yeah, um, I suppose. Sorry. That was... But but no, I mean... Uh, Paula Kwani. Okay, I this love one. that. This one, because I hope it brings golf together yeah mm. you know or it helps yeah it helps bring this together so we can stop and move forward this one was pretty cool um the Trane, Trane must have been the nice was, one that's Trane securing was, your dp card yeah, so i you know kick-started my career i mean mm. i have a, a good story about that too and this this is one for the kids to remember for sure it's swanee open i had to pay my tax bill and i bought my bought myself a house and i'd miscalculated my tax but anyway long story short I paid my tax bill and after paying my tax bill I woke up the Tuesday morning and I had one rand 53 cents in my bank account I had a paycheck from the previous week yeah. Joburg to still come in but uh, I needed to pay the Wednesday was the first of the month I needed to pay all my debit orders and everything and I had one rand 53 so I had to borrow I actually had to borrow money to pay my debit orders for the month and then I went on and won the event my goodness so isn't that cool with that knowing you know, I had a little bit of security coming, obviously, yeah. in, the, in the paycheck, but but yeah, it was that's that's how life is. So, you know, whenever you're pushed into a corner, don't give up. It's yeah. pretty cool. So when you open up your bank account this morning and it's looking <laughs> quite, deep, keep going, keep going, <laughs> <Just> keep going. <clears throat> it does change. Yeah. You, you you guys are very proof of that. Favorite course, Leopard Creek. Oh, that's amazing. It's eh? also my favorite course. Uh, I can tell you now, you know, I was privileged last my third time there, and I just, there's nothing. Mm. There, there's nothing that beats it. But it, the course, you know, it, it, the course lat and all of that, but it's, I think it's, it's the, the, for I me, think it's the bush. It's the bush. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's the whole thing that comes Listen, together. Listen, it's a beautiful golf course. It's it not is, just yeah. the bush. Yeah, yeah. It's manicured. Yeah. It's got better. It's, yeah. it's got much better. But I will say, my favorite courses all around the world are all experiences. And as an African, it's the number one experience. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, if I could take anybody from anywhere in the yeah, world yeah, to show them be, what African yeah. golf should be, yeah, that would be it. And I think um, they've done an amazing job there. You know, St Andrews is another experience. Yeah. That's my favorite Lynx yeah. golf course. And yeah. then Pebble Beach is probably my most iconic. Yeah. For the views yeah. and everything, golf course. And you know? for the history. And for history, exactly. Your favorite fishing spot? You said. Yeah, Zambezi River's got to be it. Yeah. Zambezi River. Again, just for the bush the noise and the 
ridiculously good fishing. Yeah. Mm. Why restriction? So another good story. I was on a range in Bloemfontein when I was. I just got my cod, and the Tyrell or it. He uh, he now lives in Australia, I think, and um, he was doing a demo day. There was a demo day at the range, and all the companies were there. And I walked on there barefoot and just started hitting all the new clubs because, you know, I was 20 years old at that stage. You just want to try all the new stuff. So I was hitting TaylorMade and Callaway and I hit Strix and Irons and I hit Ping and I hit everything, you know, that day. But I was hitting balls there and he said, do you mind, you know, hitting a driver? Hit a driver, hit another driver, hit another driver. Barefoot. Barefoot. And... uh, (laughs) Well, I mean, as a bloom boy, would yeah, be, right? Right, yeah, right. Why, why would you have shoes on? <laughs> yeah. And um, he said to me, what's your name? I said, no, my name's Dean Burmester. He then made a phone call to Mike Powell right there on the spot. He said, Mike, there's this kid. His name's Dean. He's just got his card for the Sunshine Tour. We need to, we need to grab him. So that was it. I was tricking from then on. Um, so Tyrell wasn't with uh, Adidas and No, Taylor it wasn't back Adidas then. TaylorMade then. And then he moved to Adidas TaylorMade and Adrian Reed felt and uh, they poached me for, I think it was a three-year deal. So I went to TaylorMade for three years. That's when I won Swanee Open. And uh, I was in Europe then and that was, I mean, amazing company as well. But then when they did their kind of merger and got bought out and everything, there wasn't really space for many contracts. Mm-hmm. And um, I was still using the Shrixen ball and uh, the guys at Tricks in Europe were were amazing, you know, with with allowing me to still use the ball and and because I loved it just for low spin. So I've always used the ball. I've used the ball since I've been a professional, and um, I'm very proud to be back with the company and still using the product and the ball and and enjoying it. Any thank yous from your side? Anybody that's listening got you to obviously to this point in journey? Yeah, I mean, so many. Eh? Gee, I gotta obviously start with my wife um, for her support, wavering support, putting her career. She was a very driven young woman when I met her and we got married. And for putting all that on hold just to travel the world and follow me in my career, I know how difficult that would have been. But I'm gonna retire someday, babe, and you can go back to work. So thank you. <laughs> old man, it's yeah, coming. Old man <laughs> when the kids are just old enough, to I'll, uh, stand and fish with yeah, you. Yeah, with and the fish and travel. Oh, yeah. And there he is. So you know, my wife, my parents for giving everything up. Because your mom got you in golf. So did yeah, you. my parents. I mean, my parents played every Wednesday, every Saturday yeah. when I was a kid growing up, and my mom was a. You know, all Africa ladies champion a couple of times. Yeah. My dad was a great club champion cricketer. many times and a yeah. great cricketer and a great sportsman. The golf club is where I grew up on the weekends, um, there in round table. So um, to them for obviously one, introducing me to the game and two, for sacrificing everything, you know, to get me to where I am today. Um, my late grandfather and grandmother for kind of actually giving my parents the opportunity to give me the opportunity, you know, it goes back a long way. Yeah. But, and for everything we've been through to still be still be where where we are in a good place as a family is is pretty special and then from a South African you know from a South African side I have to thank my ex headmaster uh, mr Jan Falstead. Um he was an amazing amazing man and what he did I mean golf when I was in gray golf wasn't a sport it was a club and then we my standard nine year my grade 11 year we started to win quite often and he changed it and turned it into a sport and got us sponsors and got us shirts I mean we used to wear just our old gym shirt to golf that's what we used to wear and our school shorts that was our clothing attire as a club and it changed into Nike and ping golf bags and you know I mean ball sponsors and everything and being recognized when I turned my trick I was the first I, or my first team were the first uh, first kids in the history of the school in 153 years to get honours for golf. No way. So I have to thank him for putting golf in the school on the map. And, um, you know, it's produced another amazing talent in Wilco Nino, but yeah. um, amongst a few others, you know, who are going to come through um, in time, I think. So, yeah, to him really special and then when I turned professional to the late Sam Hackner and his family 
and Investec Bank, you know, they gave me an opportunity to to take golf up full time and and stop waitering and you know be there and be 110% committed. And having that backing really helped me um, along a lot, you know, along the way. Um, fellow players, you know, guys like Darren Fitgott, Justin Walters, guys who took me under their wing when I was, you know, heading to Europe and in a big scary world that I, you know, I'd never even flown overseas before. I went and played my first Challenge Tour event. So, you know, to those guys, thanks for making that that easier, you know. And um, to Mr. Rupert, obviously, to for the opportunities he gave everyone, everyone in South African yeah. golf. Yeah. Him, Selwyn, Nathan, yeah. you know, ex-commissioners of the Sunshine Tour, yeah. um, you know, Grant Hepburn, Golf RSA. Yeah. And then, yeah, now my team, most recently, is probably everyone in my team, thank you for their hard work and putting up with me because as easygoing as I can be, I think I can be a little firm and a little harsh sometimes. So, um, yeah, thanks to, to them for sticking around, I suppose. <laughs> well, Arthur, thank you for um, giving Dean the win. Yeah, when I mean, did. his career. Because that's basically, <laughs> let's be honest, you could have summarized it by just thanking Arthur mm. for yeah, yeah. your career. Yeah, yeah, of it course. It could have just ended there. That one putt just that boosted one putt. That was just changed my life. He was going to then play cricket for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, there was a chance, I'll tell you. There was no way that was happening. <laughs> one of my best mates, Riley Rousseau, so hit me for five sixes in a row. That was when I hung up my boots. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I used to think I was okay, but... Yeah, special <coughs> talent. I'm glad yeah. I didn't go down cricket. I didn't want to bowl to A.B. de Villiers and the likes of Virat Kohli yeah, exactly. and those guys. So. Well, Dean, from, from my side, what a privilege this morning. And I don't think you understand what an honor it is for you to give up your time this morning to come and sit with me and Arthur. You know, for the people that are listening, because I'm telling you now, Dean, why we guide some of these questions is Arthur and I, you know, don't get approached every day. But when people come up to us, the youngsters especially, oh, my word, you don't understand how much I learned from Eric's interview. And the dad's going, oh, I'm so much more settled, you know, knowing that other dads are going through that same thing, yeah. not sure where to go from here. So thank you for the role that you and all the legends you've mentioned today, playing currently in South Africa and the role, for taking the time to come through here. You know, like Arthur and I said, it is a little bit easier doing it privately, you know, yeah. in a private plane. <laughs> but, yeah. but we want to thank you guys so much for doing it. And good luck for the rest of this year um, with Alfred Daniel. That's left. That's the next one now. Yeah, South African Open this weekend. South African Open, Open then, yeah. and then good luck to all he of you. You might need to just get a suitcase for another trophy or two. Yeah, that one's a little bigger. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody that contributes towards it, I think that, you know, for those that are listening, thank you for those that went out this weekend and watched and are watching on Super Sport, even yours, because that adds to the sponsors of it, you know, to give views and stuff onto, the, onto Super Sport and the camera work, I mean, just at the moment with the tracing and everything that they're doing. And remember, in an established and not that we're not established hear me out but our tournaments are still growing it, yeah. you know it's now all of a sudden I start to feel like in a not an American but real I feel real big tournament when you when you go to these events mm. now it feels like it's a major event that's being put yeah. up yeah the I tour mean, has grown tremendously I mean look at Africa you know the major we had now in Africa then Sun City I mean look at how it was done the, the, the feedback from all the players it, it's that win for Max is literally, you know, being listened to in the American plays. And I bet you that's going to maybe pull a few of them next year to come and do it. I think so. I think um, golf's in a healthy place. And I think a lot of guys are realizing that they, they still need to grow the game because yeah, the, the game is yeah. growing. So yeah. the only way to grow it is take golf all over the world. Yeah. Let it keep going. You know, yeah. there's nothing better than for little kids to watch the likes of Justin Thomas and Max yeah. Homer and yeah. Louis, Charles, yeah, Charles, you know, Dean. major winners. Yeah. Uh, you know myself Brandon yeah and Eric you know everybody who comes back it's it's big and you you only realize that when you were that kid so yeah well I think um our events are, are really special and the Investec South African Open is going to be going to be a big week this week at Blair Athol and I know that um Richard Wainwright and his whole team and everyone at Investec has, has done an amazing, amazing job, job in putting yeah. on the adventure so I tell you what now I'm sitting here thinking that their boys trip you know, if you think about a boys' trip for golf, we're all meeting at Leopard and playing a tournament. That's it. That's I mean, be so cool. isn't that be great. just the sh 
but you know what's the, you're not even going to be better. The afternoon game drives with Louis and the bottle of brandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A couple of game drives, a lot of brying. I don't yeah. think there'll be any use of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> there'll all. be someone with a packet of salad and a lot of meat. I think yeah. that's what's going to be happening. But um, yeah, I, I really look forward to Leopard Creek. It's uh, it's going to be a special week for us. Mm. Martin, good luck and thanks again for your time and enjoy your game, uh, game of golf also this afternoon. Arthi. Dean, always nice seeing you, Bruce. Thanks, thanks for your thanks, time. Bro. It's nice seeing you again. And good luck for the rest of the two tournaments. Yeah. Go on and crush it, man. Yeah. You know, Mornay, if you don't mind, you know, Arthi, I just want to say to you as well, thank you for your relationships, Brian. Thank you for this morning. And, you know, the role that he plays at these events and tours, really, mm. I, I, I know that you are very humble when it comes to oh, those yeah. things. He's got me a backup putter. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, you know, yeah, nice he has saved. I mean, I didn't, definitely didn't save Dean. And built my two on. Yeah. Oh, you see. Yeah, you see, brand new two on because my other one cracked. So I had to oh, organize so a brand new one. Oh, you were actually cracking it on the, on the range. Yeah, so I got that a brand new one. Brand new one this week, which worked wonders. Thanks, Arts. Yeah, so for all the roles that you play, seriously, Arthur, for the way you give back and stuff as well. And I know this is a personal shout out this morning, but it's the uh, it's an appropriate um, um, moment. Um, moment or episode to do it with on. Yeah. And thank you very much for everything you do. I'm so proud um, that I can now call you my mate. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. you know what I mean. But keep you know, on Dean, it. yeah, I'll keep working on it. <laughs> you know Dean what I mean? Just say, to work out know, issues. Um, giving back, I love giving back as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah you give. It's massive to your heart. So I, can, I can't, I can't give money back, but I can give my time. <laughs> you Time's do worth more that, than money, yeah, right? and yeah. you do that tremendously as well. So no, I love what I do.